with him over homework. Home walk restaurant. Need a review? No, I need help. He's very smart, but his mind wanders. He's disorganized. I think I understand. Oh, God. Finding best potatoes for french fries. No! Russet. Fingerling. Yukon uh, Gold. Why don't you understand me? Sorry, I was trying to show how Connor feels every day. Frustrating, isn't it? Redirecting to understood.org. For the one in five kids with learning and attention issues, this is what life can feel like. Explore understood.org, a free online resource about learning and attention issues designed to help your child thrive in school and in life. Understood.org, because understanding is everything. Brought to you by understood.org and the Ad Council. If you're a single man under the age of 35, you'd probably like to know what the ladies are looking for on an online dating site. You had a few drinks and you got for buzz driving. See, that could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. And doesn't a guy who's back living with his parents but calls them my roommates just scream Mr. Right? Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. A message from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the app. Find out the Renaissance with the M's. What's your boy, Emmanuel Blaze and Emma, folks? The M's. The M's. Emma. <laughs> Emma Emmanuel and Emma. So right now, man, if you didn't, you, you get the chance to hear, if you didn't know all about this show, we're starting off Super Bowl Sunday. We're kicking it off, and today's topic is financial infidelity. So, Emma, tell them the reason why this topic came up and what, what, what brought this all about. You know, this is a topic that's, that's near and dear to my heart, um, Prior to, you know, my wife and I have never had any issues about money. That's one of the things that when we met, I was very adamant about that. I don't play with money. Mm -hmm. um, previous relationships, my, my, you know, I had to deal with financial infidelity, and, and it does hurt. You know, mm -hmm. it takes an emotional toll. So my wife and I, you know, we work hard, so we like to watch uh, Ratchet TV on VH1. Yeah, you told me. Yeah, that. we like yeah. to watch. But you know what? It makes you feel good about yourself as a person. Right. So I, I also do it for my own self -esteem. I always feel guilty that I'm not a good mom or I'm not a good friend or I'm not a good this or I'm not a good that. And when you watch those people, you're like, you know what? Wow. <laughs> I, I am a really good person. Okay. Yeah. So we were watching this show and this woman was, uh, her husband is some type of music producer or something like that. And right. she was, you know, kept on, she was on him about, you know, putting money aside for their kid's future. Mm -hmm. You know, every time and she was in his face, you know, we need money. You're buying this. You're buying that. We need money for our kids' college fund. We need money for our kids' future. This man gave her 20 stacks, about $20,000, and she opened up. She didn't, she didn't invest it. She didn't put it in the bank. She opened up a clothing store. Wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. So she goes at him about getting she all this She pressures him. I mean, to the point where they're having, you know, arguments and, you know, some really heated discussions about him being irresponsible with and money. not with the money and not thinking about their, their kid's future. So he can't get 20. Right. Not dollars. Not, not $20, dollars, not $200. <laughs> dollars. $20, $20, and instead of doing everything, she says, she went and opened up. She went and, and put, you know, took that money and financed one of her dreams. And not her store was successful or she was successful you know we, we're going to put that on the shelf right right if you're married or your partner sharing money with someone and you tell them what you're going to do with the money you know it's financial cheating so it's financial infidelity um so you know we've got tons and tons of stories so i mean this is like that i know you with your background and, and what you do you hear this? I mean, how common is this? You know, it is pretty Pretty high. It's it's like two, well, five Americans committed financial infidelity. And this is per the National Endowment for Financial Education because, you know, I don't talk off the top of my head. I have facts. <laughs> <laughs> These are not alternate why, facts. Why, why this is really facts. <laughs> I mean, in, in, in talking about this, so what are some of the things you've heard uh, about when you hear S some of the stories or? We can, we can go into stories. Oh, uh, you know, I'm like, I'm on the dish to dirt because outside that love of hip-hop there are stories like this all the time and yeah. i'm sure you hear this it's lot. very i mean a lot of marriages end because of you know there's there's again the cheating of of the emotion then there's also cheating of you know financial you, you're breaking a bond no matter how you do it you're breaking a bond with your partner if you do something you know they're going to be upset about um you, you have to have that conversation 
That's very deep. You know, some of us, some women learned it from their mothers. Some guys learned it from their fathers. You know, we all learn, we all have money value, so. So do you think, in the case of values like that, that's a great point you brought. Is it a learned value, or is it a learned? What is it that I'm not making excuses? Yeah, for no, no, no. It, it could be it's very it could be very very deep seated. You know, um, some people actually need to go to therapy with money values. You know, a lot of things that they do. You know, when people use retail therapy, um, or have to buy something, if something you know is wrong, there's something else going on there, and that's what way beyond what I, you know, <laughs> that's beyond my education. I'm not. I'm not is, but some people really do need therapy. You're a money therapist. No. Nah, I just mess with no. you. <laughs> hey, so I want to also say, we want y'all, if you got questions or story for this show, Emma would be a great person to call in. Call us at 678-613-5857 and let us know if you have questions about things like this. We want y'all to be interactive with the show. What we got coming up? Coming up, we are going to get into some stories. You know I'm dying to tell. I know you got them all listed. I got them all day. listed. I'm, I'm dying to tell, and then you know we have a we have a guest later on. Yeah. Um, you know, a very special guest, uh, a, a, another woman who is the first to do something. Black woman who's the first to do something. So. Black History Month, y'all get ready. Black History Month. Man, I love card night. You ready, boys? You got a king? Go, fish that! Oh, come on! <laughs> this is WWE superstar Titus O'Neil. It only takes a moment to make a moment. Take time to be a dad today. Learn more at 877-4DAD-411 or visit fatherhood.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. Coming to Tampa Bay, I said we want to win a Super Bowl, and I believe we will. From IamSecond.com. We came close, but never really did win that championship. Former NFL head coach Tony Dungy. At the end of my sixth year, I was fired, and it was one of the biggest disappointments of my life. Next year, I'm in Indianapolis, get to the playoffs, but get knocked out again. The next couple of years, it's the same thing. Everyone is saying Colts are never going to win one. And I did wonder why didn't it pan out the way I thought it would. But I determined that I had to have Christ first that everything else came below that, including my own desires. The next year, that ended up being our year to, to go to the Super Bowl and win it, and it was a wonderful feeling. Every decision I make, I'm gonna make it through the lens of Jesus Christ, and he got us to that ultimate victory. I'm Tony Dungy, and I am second. It is Sean Prime from Inside the Loop with myself and Brenna B, and I've been talking about Jeans Body Tech for a minute simply because it's a premier gym in a pristine spot without a premium price. All the weight you need, all the machines you want, free parking, all in Buckhead. Come on, it's crazy. 700 Miami Circle is where you want to work out today. And for those who are feeling a little bit down because you may not have followed through, the healthy new year resolution thing hey it's still the new year you can start today look at yourself a year from now and hello is that you because you're looking good like snack like yes you are 700 miami circle or go to facebook.com forward slash jeans body tech also known as jbt fitness either way 49 bucks is nothing to pay to feel you every day Opiates has taken everything and everyone I've ever loved away from me. Everything. I blew my ankle out and I got prescribed being pills by my doctor. If making my detox public is going to help somebody, I'm all f***. I just had a warning. Opioid dependence can happen after just five days. Know the truth. Spread the truth. A message from Truth, the Ad Council, and ONDCP. Deliberate dumbing down. Dumb down. Deliberate dumbing down. Like, why would they do this? Sensation Station Radio. Down. So, welcome back to Find Out the Renaissance with the M's. We're talking a little financial infidelity right now. Uh, I know Emma, we got a few stories to tell. I know you... Jumping uh, <clears throat> at the bit. Give us the first one. Give us a good story that you... Uh, no names. No names. <laughs> story or two about this topic that we're talking about today. Um, one of the stories I heard was um, from a gentleman whose wife 
um, wanted to keep up with the Joneses. And what she did, well, he got a bonus, and the bonus had been talked about the of the bonus, but they didn't talk about the after. The after. Right. So what she did was she had a brand new Suburban. It was less than a year old, and she decided she wanted a new one. And they were up the so of course the vehicle is upside down. Right. And she traded it in and got a new one because she needed a safer vehicle for the kids. So let me get this straight. Let me bring this to life. When it was a less than a year old. Less than a year old. Which means it probably was what you call it? Brand new, top of the line. Top heavy, steel A. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. So she go and trade it in. Yes. Probably steal all one more than that. Yes. Because as soon as you drive it off the lot, it, you it upside down, right? Yeah. Right. And she buys a brand new. Bought a brand new one. I mean, when you say brand new, you mean brand. I mean brand new. Yes. So old money plus new money means too much money. Too much money, and the and the and the bonus was gone. With that with that purchase, they didn't even have a conversation about it. She, she just, just she spent it. Yeah. So what was the uh, aftermath of this? Uh, yeah, not saying. Uh, dang. Not saying I'm not supposed to talk about the aftermath of this one. Okay, we won't talk about the aftermath. But, but but what but I will but what I will say is it did cause a lot of problems in the relationship. I can see. I mean, it caused a lot of problems in the relationship because, you know, if you say to someone, "Hey, I'm getting an extra thirty thousand dollars," and then they turn around and spend it before you have a a conversation about it, you know. So she went in, and because of what she was, she, she got the car, and, and so his money was gone before you even got His it. money was gone before, and I believe um, after taxes and everything else, they there was no money left. I'm saying change that. Their money was gone before. Whatever. <laughs> I'm saying it was his money. It was, still his, it, was, it was still at his job when she spent it. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't even out yet. It, it wasn't still, even in the it, bank account yet, and she yeah. spent it. <laughs> so when, when, when you've heard a story such as this, I mean... What are the, some of the things that you've seen to help people? What are the reactions of the couple or the, the person or, or things of that nature? It's devastating. And the person who, I'm, I, I hate to say victimized, is victimized by it, but they end up suffering uh, PTSD. Mm. The same way a person suffers PTSD from cheating, um, uh, emotional cheating, you know, cheating of the flesh or whatever. It's the same thing because, you know, there are some... You have to trust the person that you're with, right? Right. And if you look in your bank account and your bank account balance is different as the person that you lie next to, it takes a lot. It takes a lot. It takes a lot. Uh, it takes a lot. I know you got more. Yes. Can you give us another one? Yeah. One of my favorites is a guy who uh, used to get speeding tickets and he never told his wife about them. Excuse me? Yeah, he used to get he get speeding tickets, and then he'd just like throw them in the glove box and not tell them there would be warrants for his arrest. <laughs> so he didn't even mention them. He wouldn't pay them. Wasn't paying them. Wasn't talk, like he put them in the glove box, and they were forgotten about. So how many did he? I think, I think it was about four or five. By the time it was all said and done, but he ended up getting arrested. There was a warrant for his arrest. He got arrested with his kid. Anyway, it's a long story, but, man. I, so yeah. not only did he not pay. Yeah. He put everybody in jeopardy. Right, because and then, once you start getting warrants and things. Imagine having, having, imagine this. Imagine having to go, you get a call from the police station saying that they have detained your spouse. And they need you to come down right away and pick up your child. Oh, the child was in the car? Oh, you didn't add the tidbit in there. The child was in the car. So imagine that. Fireworks. 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 I get people in trouble up here. I am. Yeah, I, I mean, am. I'm not going to have any friends at the end of this show. Yeah. <laughs> All my friends are going to stop telling me their business. <laughs> Somebody going to be like, hey, hey, never mind. <laughs> I heard the show. Yeah. You want me to what? No. I'm keeping all my secrets. Yeah, don't talk to me anymore. I mean, just in, in, in all of that, it, it sounds like something that is very... Um, could be detrimental to relationships. Detrimental. You know, um, there was a guy. Uh, I got a, another message about um, from a woman about um, her ex-husband took money from their child's college fund to fund a business. Mm. And um, the, 
you know, what, again, whether or not the business was successful or not successful is kind of irrelevant because you, you're essentially stealing from your child. So if you steal from your child, I mean, I, you know, that's it's like putting your, your child's bill in your name. And, and, and when <laughs> you, you do your, that. Your, yeah, your bill's in your child's name. It's yeah. the same thing. And that's tough because now you're not only stealing from yourself, your family, now you're stealing from your child. That's yeah, even going and that's the, even worse. Yeah. To me, that's, that's even worse. That's like st stealing from grandma. Yeah, yeah, and for all of us who know how it felt to steal from grandma, it's not good. You gotta. <clears throat> well, children who steal from grandmas, children who stick hands in purses, you know, I get that. No, no, we talking about. But we're talking about under grown the mattress. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> under the mattress. Grandma. No, grandma got a couple hundred of that. <laughs> grandma has some stacks <laughs> under the mattress. <laughs> Her lumpy bed. Why that floorboard loose right there? Oh. Uh, some thousands yeah. of that. old, old but, people didn't believe in banks but and that's and i think people think financial is families could be more than just husband wife like you said yeah stealing from a parent or a grandparent yes or doing something like that that could yes. change families it, it with you know people who have to take responsibility for their parents elder right. care one sibling and then that sibling makes a decision about what they want to do without telling the other siblings about it. Right. And so, you know, you're like, you're stealing from your parent, but you're also stealing part of the inheritance from your siblings. When you right. make decisions about what to do with money and there are other people that are involved. So it's, it's, it's selfish, yeah. you know, it's selfish. Um, and to me, you should never be afraid to have a money conversation with anybody. I mean, conversation is going to happen whether you want it to happen or not. So just have it. It's better to have it up front than to have it on the back end, because on the back end is where all the damage happens. I want you to also understand this. It's just not one ethnicity we're talking about. This. Oh, it's no, this is not a black thing. It's not a white right. thing. It's not a, it's a human being thing. I mean, if we look, we can look at stuff all over the world. You can look on BBC. You can look everywhere, and you will see stories of people who commit financial. Yeah, that's what I'm Business partners commit financial infidelity. I have stories about that too. Because you tie in together. Because you, you yes, a relationship. Yes, a business, a business ship is. Like yeah. Easy is. to get into, hard to get out. Boy. <laughs> Boy. So Emma, tell, introduce to who we we're coming up next. Oh, coming up next, we have Clarkson. Diana Clarkson. What are you going to tell us about? Well, hi Emma. Hi. How are you this morning? Happy to be here, and I'm going to talk about financial infidelity. Oh. I'm also going to talk about my new business venture, and some of the things that you've been discussing are things that I've experienced and are dealing with right now. Uh oh. So I'm like looking forward to it. Uh oh. Voice. She's like, I have a lot to say. So stay tuned. <laughs> stay tuned. When I grow up, I want to be a new pair of blue jeans. When I grow up, I want to be a kid's first computer. I want to be a wrong place on a I want to be a football stadium. I want to be a bike that races around the country. I want to be a bench on a forest trail. When I grow up, I don't want to be a piece of garbage. And if you recycle me, I won't be. Give your garbage another life. Recycle. Learn how at IWantToBeRecycled.org. Brought to you by Keep America Beautiful and the Ad Council. If you're a single man under the age of 35, you'd probably like to know what the ladies are looking for on an online dating site. A guy who had a few drinks and later got pulled over for buzz driving. See, that could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. And doesn't a guy who's back living with his parents but calls them my roommates just scream Mr. Right? Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. A message from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the app. I'm probably okay to have one more drink before I drive home. I'm probably okay. I open the window to stay alert. Probably okay. I just pop some gum in my mouth. Step out of the car, please. I probably made a mistake. Probably okay isn't okay when it comes to drinking and driving. If you see a warning sign, stop and call a cab, a car, or a friend. Buzzed driving is drunk driving. A message brought to you by NHTSA and the Ad Council. It is Sean Prime from Inside the Loop with myself and Brenna B. And I've been talking about Jeans Body Tech for a minute simply because it's a premier gym in a pristine spot without a price. All the weight you need, all the machines you want.
been a little bit down because you may not have followed through on the healthy New Year resolution thing, hey, it's still the new year. You can start today. Look at yourself a year from now, and hello, is that you? Because you're looking good, like snack-like. Yes, you are. 700 Miami Circle, or go to Facebook.com forward slash Jeans Body Tech, also known as JBT Fitness. Either way, 49 bucks is nothing to pay to feel your best every day. You use Tearless Baby Shampoo because it's gentle on your baby's eyes. You make sure his toys don't have any sharp edges. You always test the bath water to make sure it's not too hot. You taught her what to do when the smoke alarm goes off. You make sure she wears a helmet when she rides her bicycle. You put on his sunscreen, even when he's embarrassed his friends will see. You do so much to keep your child safe. But are you using the right car seat for your child? Is your child facing the right way in the car seat? Is the seat too big or too small? How do you know when it's time to move your child into the next type of seat? Car crashes are a leading killer of children ages 1 to 13. Protect your child's future at every stage of life. For information on the right seat for your child, visit safercar.gov slash the right seat. That's safercar.gov the right seat. A message from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Why is Connor having trouble focusing in school? Having trouble finding Connor's middle school? Would you like directions? No. Why is Connor having trouble focusing in school? Finding lowest airfare to Istanbul. No, I'm, I'm tired of fighting with him over homework. Home, walk, restaurant. Need a review? No, I need help. He's very smart, but his mind wanders. He's disorganized. I think I understand. Oh, God. Finding best potatoes for french fries. No! Russet. Fingerling. Yukon uh, Gold. Why don't you understand me? Sorry, I was trying to show how Connor feels every day. Frustrating, isn't it? Redirecting. Stood.org. For the one in five kids with learning and attention issues, this is what life can feel like. ExploreUnderstood.org, a free online resource about learning and attention issues designed to help your child thrive in school and in life. Understood.org. Standing is everything. Brought to you by Understood.org and the Ad Council. Thanks for listening to Final Gen Renaissance with the M's. Just want to say shout out to everybody out there who's listening and you want to say something. You can also look at our social media page, the Station Station Network Facebook Live page, because shout out to Lori Brant Warwick. She just says, seems like financial inf infidelity goes beyond stealing. It's assuming power of another using money as the two. The intent seems sneakier. Your thoughts on that, Emma? Uh, it's cheating. Yeah. <laughs> cheating is cheating. I mean, whether, you know, however you want to slice it up, it's, it's any time lie, steal, do something without the consent of myself up, you know, <laughs> to, lift. to lift myself up. Self. But, uh, yeah, it is, it is a, what was the definition she gave again? She said it seems like financial infidelity goes beyond stealing. Yeah. Because it feels assuming power of another one using money as the tool. You know, and I don't even know if it's power. I don't know if it's, because I'm not coming from that standpoint. Yeah. For some people, I think it's an immaturity. You know, I really think it has to do with your maturity levels because if you are in a relationship with someone, you know, why wouldn't you have an open and honest conversation with them about our money? You know, this is what we're building together. You know, one of the things that I think people misconstrue is your business is your empire or your household is your business. Your household is your empire. And anything that you do against that is going to set you guys back, going to set your kids back. Like, I don't know a pair of shoes that can, you know, feel happy now. At some point, they're going to see you with the shoes on. They're going to see you with the shirt on. They're going to see you with the new phone. They're going to see, you know, you're going to get caught. Well, say, <laughs> At some point, you're going to get caught. Right. Like, and man. even the people that do the, um, that have loans. And they don't, they don't know people that get into marriages and don't tell about their student loans. Well, we're going to bring in a special guest, Emma. Introduce. We gave a little clip. A little, little, little clip. Give a full introduction. All right. All right, so we have Diana Robin with Life Love Jazz. She's the first black woman to throw on an international jazz festival in Cabo San Andreas, mm. right? Yes. Luxury jazz festival. I'm a little jealous. Welcome. Thank you. How are you doing today? Um, well, thank you be here oh man so if you don't mind tell us a little bit about your business real quick I, I'm, I'm trying to see if i get my money so i don't do any financial infidelity 
Right, right. Get and it started in 2017. I lived part of the year in Los Cabos, Mexico. Wow. And Imagine. I was, oh, yes, it's amazing. <laughs> but, you know, Why I worked very hard. Let her finish. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and um, actually was on their way to the pick her up with another friend, very as a part of the um, group. And I said to him, I said, you know, could you live here full time? He says, girl, I don't know. It is dead in the evening, you know, for people of a certain age. And we, I said, you know, we need a festival. Oh, wow. And that's how it started. And really, it was an opportunity. The amazing thing about it is it allowed me to live out my three most important things. That's travel, music, and giving back to us. Oh, wow. And so what makes our experience unique is the fact that it is a jazz experience. It's yes. not just a jazz festival. Because we have health and wellness. We have amazing speakers, as to my right. <coughs> And we well, have. About that. We keep going. Keep yeah, going. <laughs> we really, we really want to make it different. We do community outreach. Last year, we um, gave. Um, um, we had an association with the American Medical Association and okay. others. We did outreach and community involvement and did health screenings for 300 people who, wow. could, who could not afford it this year. Our outreach is Cabo Vey, Cabo Seas, and we're doing eye examinations. We were just there two weeks ago. So when did, you're doing these eye exams. And Medical stuff. This is for the Mexican children it is. or Mexican people. People in general, people? the okay. elderly, those oh, in, wow. um, those who so aren't awesome. able to afford medical care. So it's one thing to go somewhere, enjoy the tequila, enjoy the sun, enjoy. The <laughs> uh, Wait, so how many of the eye visions with problems or tequila problems? <laughs> <laughs> so no, most of them are just really like to. 600 eye screening. We're going to do 600 more cataract surgeries. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been, you said 20 years? It's been 20 years. I'm no, I'm not that old. Oh, that's um, true. So, I'm just saying. <laughs> so, the reason I brought you in here because no this, topic, mm -hmm. this topic was pretty hot. Yes. And, you know, when I we were talking about the show, and she said, oh, I have 50 million stories. <laughs> so, why don't you, if you don't mind, if you're comfortable, why don't you, why don't you, uh, Tell us about that. I will. You know, I'll tell you a story about financial infidelity, but also, if we can, talk a little bit about financial fidelity, the responsibility I think we, especially as people, have to our own finances and taking responsibility. We want the dirt first. Yes. So the dirt is, um, <laughs> I, I know dirt. of a situation, this broke, I think I this changed this. my <laughs> outlook on relationships, probably why I'm not married now, but a friend of mine's mother, married 40 years, four kids, never worked military wife had been um, you know a stay-at-home mom husband retired from the military then um, took a job like happens frequently because she retired relatively early had two retirements went to the hospital for hernia surgery never came home wow. some other woman picked him up from the hospital he moved out her name she found out her name was not on the house the cars anything oh hang on a second when she said he never came home I thought you meant he no, died no. I didn't know you meant that he moved out he was he with someone Oh, oh so he just she went to French. the hospital. She went to the hospital. Him up, he was not there. So, so wait a minute. Wait I a think minute. We were wait a minute. Page. Yeah, yeah. We, uh, so this is totally no. not what I was. So he didn't pass. He just left. He he bounced, and the kids had wow. to support her for four years while they fought in court, and to keep the you know they had multiple houses, but to keep the house she was living in from being sold out from under her, they had to fight against their own father to keep him from. But he took her off the health insurance, took her off everything. I so, don't condone violence. So I'm just saying. Yeah, that's I'm just saying. If y'all look at me and Emma's f this yeah. week, yeah. he passed so away. This is not the story. Yeah. So we yeah, can, I this is away. like new information yeah, to this us. Is, no, that's the other story about after our last year's event, my um, cousin, um, I don't want to start, he passed. And my other cousin, she's still, you know, they've been together 30 years. You know, so sometimes infidelity is not someone leaving or cheating. Sometimes people die. And if you have not had financial fidelity, where if you've taken responsibility for your own financial wellness and your own financial knowledge of what's going on in your household, shame on you. Because sometimes people do just die. People do just die. And it is everyone's responsibility to, to know how to run their household um, because things can happen. And I want to talk to you all about that. I mean, we, we do know this, and we'll talk about it on the other side. But I want to ask you, you talked about the aftermath of them, but I want to bring it up. You bring a very important point. How much of this, even though we do are married and we are with spouses and things yeah. of that nature, do we kind of need to take the onus ourselves to say, you know what, 
What's going on in here? And understanding that, I want you. I know you got you got fire over there, and yeah, over I there, have fire your over desk here. over there. So I want us to take a think about it. We're gonna talk about it on the other side. And you up here bringing up people leaving in the hospital after hernias. We. Oh. we, we. <laughs> 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 Sean Prime from Inside the Loop with myself and Brenna B. And I've been talking about Jeans Body Tech for a minute simply because it's a premier gym in a pristine spot without a premium price. All the weight you need, all the machines you want, free parking, all in Buckhead. Come on, it's crazy. 700 Miami Circle is where you want to work out today. And for those who are feeling a little bit down because you may not have followed through on the healthy New Year resolution thing, hey, it's still the new year. You can start today. Look at yourself a year from now and hello, is that you? Because you're looking good, like snack-like. Yes, you are. 700 Miami Circle, or go to Facebook.com forward slash Jeans Body Tech, also known as JBT Fitness. Either way, 49 bucks is nothing to pay to feel your best every day. We're more connected than ever before. 90% of America's students use some form of social media, but not all of it's used in a good way. Hurtful posts online are leading to social isolation for many. Psychologists say it's bullying brand new way. Well, beyond differences in I Keep Safe, we're looking to change that with ideas for students, their parents, and even teachers. Pledge to be kind online and learn more at wearekindonline.com. Okay, so five tacos a cheap large soda. That's $10,012. Please drive around. Wait, 10000 what? It's obvious you're buzzed and driving. I've only had a few. I'm fine. Yeah, the food's 12 bucks, but getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Please drive around. Actually, just park and come in. Nothing kills a buzz like getting pulled over for buzz driving, because buzz driving is drunk driving. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Major key alert. Don't ever play yourself. The key is to make it. So make it. Learn the real major keys to getting to college at GetSchooled.com. Brought to you by Get Schooled and the Ad Council. This is big business. This is the American way. Station, station network. See ya. So, I'm still kind of taken aback by somebody leaving after hernia surgery. You're speechless. I, I don't know what to say. You were too. I, I we imagine were you were. Too. Um, imagine I, the hospital workers. Can you? <laughs> imagine the ho but uh, imagine the people in the man, hospital. Man, he checked out already. Right. Oh no, he checked out. Yeah, no. yeah. What do you mean he <laughs> checked out? No, he got his bag. Got in a car. What? What? <laughs> imagine, I couldn't imagine being the nurse on the floor when, when the wife. I'm his wife. Oh. Whoa. You well, who was that you, other lady? Yeah, who? Who was his other that wife? That was another person that came and got him. And this is not Utah. <laughs> wow. And we wow. wheeled them out and everything. Wow. You know, uh, that just, uh, okay, I'm, Th I'm back here. I'm that's good. messy. Yeah. That, I mean, that, ju that, just, that just leaves, and again, you know, whether it's, it's immaturity, whether you're scared, I don't know what to call it. Um, and it's not a man thing, it's not a woman thing, it's not a black thing, it's not a white thing, it's a human being thing. You know, be honest. You know, you, you've got to, like you're saying, you, you need to know what your spouse is doing because they could die at any, at any time. Ask the questions. Ask the questions. If you can lay down with someone, and it, and it always amazes me, because I deal with people's finances, it always amazes me that people will lay down with each other before they talk about finances. Yes, and marry them. And marry people without knowing credit score is without knowing what they have in assets without knowing how much money they owe that's right. the biggest thing like the asset part i can get by yeah. <laughs> but it's the it's the liabilities because once you get married you're on the hook in a lot of cases depending on the state you live in mm -hmm. you're on the hook for that person's bills yes i think you said a big point immaturity lack of not because you know you think about love first or lust or whatever oh well, yeah and you don't think about that that money that you really need to focus on in yeah. the beginning because like you say a lot of people go into debt at the altar yes but but back to the question the call the um not a caller but the person wrote in you know you mentioned you didn't think it was necessarily um deliver you know malicious type power but i think when you're insecure sometimes people can use money as a way of controlling so if you are the financial breadwinner and you are managing the household income, I know, it, you know some of it's cultural and things like some that. Some of it's yes. But, you know, they think, I pay the bills, so don't tell me what to do and don't ask any questions. And, and that's kind of, a, to me, that's a little mm -hmm. old school. The mm -hmm. young 
people, I think the, the younger generations are not going to be that type of I think older people, because there were certain traditions and mm -hmm. norms and, you know, the man was supposed to do this or this person was supposed to do this. And some people just, you know, well, I don't, I don't like talking about finances. I don't want to know about the finances. And I remember um, I had a woman once, I didn't take the person on as a client, who cried in my office mm -hmm. because they could not or were, not even that they could not, they refused to stop spending money. <sighs> So instead of saving money for, towards retirement, so, she wanted to buy clothes and shoes, and she literally broke down boo-hoo snotting in the office because she couldn't do it anymore. And, I mean, I didn't end up taking them on because... You know, we're making plans, and, and they're going against the plans. So, you know. and, 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 and like we said before we go to break, that's a good point right there because if you think about it, she's not taking responsibility for her financial fidelity. Right. So, what do you, I mean, if you're a spouse mm -hmm. and you see somebody who's saying, I just want to spend money. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? It's the same thing with, with, with people that cheat. So, people will marry someone and hope that they change. Yeah. Ooh. You know yes. what I'm saying? Yes. Like, people yes. will marry someone who's been cheating. I won't cheat. I promise I'm going to be faithful to you once we get married. <laughs> and then you get married, and they're the same person. Yep. So, if, if the person that you are dating or you're thinking about marrying, if you can't, you know, take them for who they are for the rest of their, their life exactly as they are right now, then you need to be, you know, you need to fix certain things before you take those other steps. You don't fix things or after. Ex or accept, because right. it may be that, you know what, um, what's that old adage? Um, when they people show you who they are, believe, believe them. them. Believe. And, and if you, and you might say, you know what, on the list of things that are most important to me in a relationship, you're stepping out every now and then, if we're talking about cheating yeah. or you're overspending, is not a deal breaker. Right. But at least going to that eyes wide open. I've made this decision. It's a conscious decision. And I think both of you said that. That's the big point we want to drive is know what you're getting into. Know yes. what you're getting into. a lot of people say, like you just said, I go in, I want to lay down with you, get married to you, and I don't know what I'm, you know, yeah. hey man, how you do with money? Right. <laughs> right. But, but many times they know it, and then they're in denial of it. I, I would you think know. they can make changes. Make like, a change. No, changes mm -hmm. don't happen after. I'm just killing it right now, because not only people think they can change the person, but they think they change the way they spend. Yes. yes. And that's not going to happen. If you're a single man under the age of 35, you'd probably like to know what the ladies are looking for on an online dating site. A guy who had a few drinks and later got pulled over for buzz driving. See, that could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. And doesn't a guy who's back living with his parents but calls them my roommates just scream Mr. Right? Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. A message from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the app. If you're a single man under the age of 35, you'd probably like to know what the ladies are looking for on an online dating site. A guy who had a few drinks and later got pulled over for buzz driving. See, that could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. And doesn't a guy who's back living with his parents but calls them my roommates just scream Mr. Right? Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. A message from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the app. Man, do I love car night. You ready, boys? You got a king? Go, fish that! Oh, come on! <laughs> this is WWE superstar Titus O'Neil. It only takes a moment to make a moment. Take time to be a dad today. Learn more at 877-4DAD-411 or visit fatherhood.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. <laughs> Honey, what you cook for dinner tonight? Do you want the good news or the bad news first? The bad news first. I cooked nothing. Well, that's the good news then. Uh-huh. Well, there's no bad news then because tonight we're going to have Jack. Call Jack Palace. 
for authentic Caribbean cuisine, including vegetarian entrees with authentic Caribbean flavor. Call 770-892-5049, located at 6221 Jonesboro Road, Highway 54 in Morrow, Georgia. Turk Palace. Marie Callender's knows that you may not have time to roll out dough for a perfectly flaky crust that's made from scratch. Or enough time to mix vegetables with all white meat chicken and a homemade gravy. She knows you may not have a moment to crimp the edges of your favorite chicken pot pie. But Marie Callender's does. And when she's done, all you need to do is find time to grab someone special. Sit down and savor. Marie Callender's. It's time to say it is Sean Prime from Inside the Loop with myself and Brenna B. And I've been talking about Jeans Body Tech for a minute simply because it's a premier gym in a pristine spot without a premium price. All the weight you need, all the machines you want, free parking, all in Buckhead. Come on, it's crazy. 700 Miami Circle is where you want to work out today. And for those who are feeling a little bit down because you may not have followed through on the healthy New Year resolution thing, hey, it's still the new year. You can start today. Look at yourself a year from now, and hello, is that you? Because you're looking good, like snack-like. Yes, you are. 700 Miami Circle, or go to Facebook.com forward slash Jeans Body Tech, also known as JBT Fitness. Either way, 49 bucks is nothing to pay to feel your best every day. SSNATM.com. Sensation Station Network. So I just thank you guys for listening to us. We're kicking off this great show, Financial Renaissance with the M's. Emmanuel. Emma. Emma. And hey, we right now, and you don't got everybody fired up. You got to talk to people how they can get out of this, what they can do to fix this, what how you got you for this? I just like talking about the dirt. <laughs> I just like talking about the dirt. Get out of that love with hip-hop, girl. You got to help them out now. I just love the wretchedness. <laughs> well, you know, in, in, in all honesty, uh, you know, I'll tell you what my wife and I do. And, and we, we didn't start this out because of finances. We just started this out by, you know, beginning of every year we write down our goals. So we wanted our son to get into college and get a scholarship so we had him write down goals his senior year etc cetera, etc cetera. us having goal meetings turned into once he went away to school to her and i having financial meetings and every once in a while we fall off and the, it's just like everything anything that's a habit when you fall off you can tell that you've fallen off right, right? and then we have to reel it back in okay every before every pay period eve <laughs> every pay period eve you should have a conversation with your partner or your spouse about what's going how that money is going to be divvied up how much money you're saving for yourself what bills are getting paid what goes to the kids what the kids can and can't do but everything you know like a business you, you I like that you right have to know your paycheck so you cuz yes. you know when you get paid yes <laughs> you know when you get paid and if you're a business owner and your 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 pay is cyclical you do things more on a quarterly basis every 6 weeks basis but you still have you still should have those meetings every uh you know at least 2 to 3 weeks and if you have kids bring them in on the meetings too if they're old enough they need to understand how you have to train them right, right? Mm -hmm. and so one of the things we have to do in this country we we've done a horrible job with money Right. Yes. All right. Like we just had the, the shutdown and there were FBI employees going to food banks. Uh -huh. uh, let, let, that, let that set in. A person with a government job didn't have enough money to, and it, granted it happened right after the holidays, but that's a bad sign. Yes. So, you know, we're almost in a financial crisis type of thing. So you have to tell your, your kids need to know when they ask for money, what really happens. Yes. But Emma, what if it's a single person? So you're talking about a lot about couples, but there's yeah. a lot of people so, who family of one. Yeah, so family of one needs to write it down. You know, you write down, um, you have a financial meeting with yourself. You have to take time and look at your goals, look at your plans. This is what I want to accomplish this quarter. I want to pay this down. I want to pay this down. You have to have some type of plan. It can't just all be in your head, you know. Yeah, and so, also, uh, you brought up before, if you got business partners, yes. you definitely need to have those type of meetings as well. Yes, yes, because yes, yes. Financial infidelity is partnerships. Yeah, partnerships with yourself, with yes. your spouse, or with your business yes. partner. Yeah, I, 
okay, I'm, I'm off the stories now, but yes. <laughs> yeah. I saw it coming. It was coming. <laughs> yeah. And as a serial entrepreneur, that hit pretty deep with me, too. Yeah. You're absolutely right. Oh, she has stories for days. Yeah, yes. no, yes. because I'm sure you've had partners and, mm -hmm. hey, I thought we had this. Right. Oh, we I thought don't? we were going to do this. <laughs> yeah. You spent what on marketing? Oh, uh, <laughs> yes. Yeah. We need all them Facebook We needed shirts. T-shirts, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. what that. Yes. So in, in seeing that, because it sounds like the big word is a part of this is communication. Yes. yes. I think a lot of people don't understand that. A lot of people, you feel like you get to a certain point or you feel like you want those. So I know from a male perspective, I hear the, the Jordan talk a lot or the shoe You know, talk. It's, I'm grown. I don't have to ask. She's not my mother. Yeah, I, I heard a man say that once, and I was thinking, ooh, you're going to get smacked down like that with your mom. <laughs> if you, your mama might come. Right, right. <laughs> Somebody may have to come for you if you, you know, if that's how you're thinking. But it's not having a conversation with someone about money, someone that you love, that you lay down with. It's not a mommy-daddy thing. It's a, it's a, you know, a mutual respect thing. Yes. I like the fact that what y'all both said it, it still needs to be business because money is, is business. It's our business. It's, 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 your household is a business. You is. and your wife have a business of running those kids. And it's probably going to be your biggest business. Yes, yes, Most it important. is. Most it's, important. Because it's the longest one, if, well, well, for they, some of us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, they say that, um, you know, um, divorce and um, money things, issues, that is the number one cause yes. of women being um, poor. Yes. So, uh, coming up. We got the second hour of the show with yes. Find Out the Renaissance of the M's. What are we going to dive into with we're that? We're going to dive into our guests. We're actually going to find out. I want to hear more about Cabo. <laughs> yes. And jazz. And, jazz. and, and, uh, we might, and, and we're not loving hip-hop, but we might sneak a story to in. I there think, you especially go. with this one over here. Y'all see it. Y'all see it dancing. <laughs> Let's find out the Renaissance with the M's. Stay tuned.